What's up, people? This is Omar bigging up Pop Killer TV. You know, sell them large like cook food. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Omar, it's so dope to meet you. I've been waiting for this moment for years. My pleasure. <laughs> huge fan. <laughs> and me too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan and your show yesterday with Courtney Pine, it was, you know, it blew my mind. Amazing chemistry on stage, amazing crowd participation, the, the beautiful mix of soul and jazz. And how did you like it? Yeah, it was fun, you know. Uh, it's my first time in Warsaw, so uh, I just enjoyed the vibe. And Courtney always turns up there. He, he, you know, brings it to another level, so it's always good. Yeah, and um, you're still promoting the album from 2017, Black Notes from the Deep, uh, that you did with uh, with Courtney. Mm. So what is it about that record that makes you want to promote it still <laughs> it's five Courtney. years after it? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime Courtney says we're going to go on tour, we're going to do any shows, then yeah, I'm going to be there, basically. Okay. <laughs> you know, but it's, a, it's a side note from what I do for my own music as well. You know, his thing is, is very jazz. And it gives me a chance to do something different to, to, to my normal stuff, you know? So it's always nice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because you had a lot of moments that were like back and forth, jazz improvisation almost, mm -hmm. with him improvising on the sax or on the flute, and you vocally. So uh, did you always have that element, or did you kind of uh, have to get used to it? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Courtney tells me this story, that he met me when I was six and he was nine years old. Exactly. We used to do these things, it was like a... a a summer course where, you know, in the summer holidays, kids go and do stuff. And uh, he said he, he recognized my talent from then. Wow. I have no idea about what he was doing at that moment, you know, but we were always destined to, to work together. That's beautiful. Mm. Uh, yeah, and one of the standout moments from yesterday's show was also your nine minute performance of There's Nothing Like This. Uh, <laughs> and it's probably still your biggest hit. Uh, you even reworked it on the album The Man. Uh, so uh, how would you explain uh, this song's phenomenon? I, I have no idea. I, I, I'll give you the, uh, the, the story behind it. Basically, I was going through my, my father's record collection and I came across this album called, uh, by a band called The Ohio Players. And heaven must, uh, and there was a, a song on there called "Heaven Must Be Like This," and that song was different at the time. When I heard it, I was like, you know, it's bass, drum, drums, and keys, and guitar, and strings. I need something like that from 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 my own uh, music as well. And the bass line, if you listen to that to that song, you can hear my song from that as well. You know, so and when I when I when I wrote it, when I heard it for the first time, it was a, it was a, a demo and. I heard it over and over, over and again, and I knew it was going to be a, a, a you know a hit from then. So it was, it was nice. Nice, and it's been uh, twenty. It's been thirty-two years since your debut album. Um, how do you look back on that time period and and that time of coming up on the London scene? <laughs> wow, <And laughs> I was part of the uh, acid jazz scene. At the time, you know, it was uh, Young Disciples, Incognito, Brand New Heavies, and you know, that we were just trying to make music that we, we liked to listen to, which was the, you know, the old soul and funk of the time, which was James Brown, which was Donny Hathaway, which was Stevie Wonder, you know, that was the thing that we were doing. And uh, I'm just blessed to um, still make that music now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come from a musical family. Uh, your brother produces a lot of your music. Your dad also played a big part in your career. Uh, so do you feel like music was kind of ingrained in your, uh, in your DNA? And do you have some, uh, some favorite uh, childhood memories uh, associated with music? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, when I was eight years old, my next door neighbor, um, she had a, a rusty old cornet, which uh, she gave me to play. And from then, that was my first instrument. And then I went to uh, baritone euphonium, then tu tuba, 
then uh, uh, guitar, uh, piano, percussion, you know, I did everything like that. Anything to do with music, I was supposed to do it. So that, that was my thing, that was my path. Okay, and uh, my introduction to your music was actually not the debut album, uh, but the song Outside. When I somehow came across this the video uh, for Outside on YouTube, I just, I was blown away. I, I kept it on repeat for, I don't know, maybe an hour. I just played that song over and over. Bless and then I started buying your CDs and collecting music and uh, kind of getting to know the whole discography uh, song by song, uh, album by album. Uh, so was this track also special for you? Very special because that was with uh, Lamont Dozier, uh, Dozier, Holland Do Dozier from the uh, you know, uh, Motown. Um, so we were, um, working in in the studio and it wasn't it wasn't so so great you know you're working with a, a legend but the chem chemistry wasn't right mm -hmm. uh, the next day when i when i got back there he's playing all this old music that i've never heard but i was like what the hell is this he goes oh, i just recorded this and never used it i was like give it to me and so that backing track that you heard was recorded in like 1978 or something. It's got um, Ray Parker Jr., Ed Green, it's got uh, so many faint, uh, uh, it's got Nathan East on bass mm -hmm. as well. And they just used it and, and didn't do anything with it. So I, I recorded it and, and then I put the vocals, I put the strings, I put the keyboard on top and it worked out. It was just a beautiful moment, you know? And uh, rest in peace, because he's, he's passed on to the ancestors now. Yeah. And uh, also the next album that you uh, dropped after For Pleasure, This Is Not A Love Song. Mm. Uh, one of the most interesting songs from that album is the remix for Say Nothing with, <laughs> uh, with All Dirty Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> what is the story behind this collab? Do you, do you want the uh, clean, one, clean story or the, the bad one? <laughs> uh, the, the raw uncut version. <laughs> so um, uh, a friend of mine is named Sonny was at the record label. I, I, I never actually met uh, D.O.B. Oh. Um, but he said that he was in London one time and he said, oh, I've got this song, would you, would you sing on it? You know, would you rap on it? And he said, yeah, 10 grand and two hookers and a bottle of Bailey's. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was the, that's the result that you get. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, okay, so speaking of rap collabs, also one of the uh, most known albums. Yeah, <laughs> I just common. noticed, yeah. Yes, sir. I got a question coming up okay, about yeah, Common. Yeah, yeah. yeah, one of the most known albums that you're featured on is Electric Circus. Um, you're, you're there on two tracks, The Hustle and Heaven Somewhere, mm. uh, which has an all-star lineup of soul singers, yeah. CeeLo Green, Bilal, Jill Scott, Mary J. Blige, Erica Badu. Uh, how do you recall those sessions and, uh, and what did it mean for you to be a part of that album, which was kind of groundbreaking at the time musically? You know, when I met uh, Common, I didn't even know that I met Common when I did because You know my song, uh, Be Thankful, with Erica? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the studio at that time. Wow. He came with her, but I didn't know I didn't know common sense. He was common sense then. And I didn't even know that, you know, that was him. And then, uh, yeah, he just called me up and said, yeah, I want you to be on this album. So he flew me out to New York. He flew me out to Detroit. I met um, uh, Jay Diller through Common. Wow. You know what I mean? It was just that just that that heavy that deep and me and that brother will always have a, a connection and watch out for the new album he may be on it, the, the next one nice nice beautiful mm. uh, so uh, what were you, like uh, what was your relationship like with Jay Dilla uh, how do you remember meeting him <laughs> so uh, I met Jay Dilla in Detroit because uh, Common got me out there and basically Jay Dilla paid for my stripper Because I went to a strip club and I had no money. I said, I said, bro, I said, bro, I ain't, I ain't got no money. He goes, yeah, I got you, bro, I got you. <laughs> I did this, and then we put down the tune. I put down the bass line on it as well. And my brother, uh, Scratch Professor, bless him, bro, he found the song the other day, and I put it up on uh, Instagram. But uh, we're gonna make something of it, uh, you know, because that guy was a genius, no, no question. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. Um, and you also worked with Erica Badu, uh, like you already mentioned, uh, Be Thankful, uh, Kaman's album. Uh, but um, what was always interesting for me was that the video version of Be Thankful featured Angie Stone instead of Erica. So how did it come about? 
So basically what happened is, is that I had Erica on the original version. The week before the release, um, we get a phone call from Motown, which was her label, saying, you can't use Erica. Erica. I'm like, what the fuck? And this is from Kidal Massenberg. You know who that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, you know, uh, D'Angelo. And there was this big battle between their label, my label. So I had to find somebody else to do it because there's no way I'm going to get it and waste that song. Yeah. But I knew Angie because Angie did a version of uh, my song, Little Boy. And uh, yeah. So then we got her to do her version. When, when she finished her version, uh, Erica's label came back and said, yeah, you can use her now. So then I ended up with two versions, you know what I mean? But we used um, Angie's because, that, you know, she was easier to, to, you know, for the label to deal with. Okay. And uh, Be Thankful is a cover of the classic 70s soul uh, song Be Thankful for What You Got by William Devon. Mm -hmm. uh, but you don't record a lot of covers. Actually, in one interview you said, you know what, if you hear me doing a Motown album, then forget it. It is time <laughs> to hang up the boots. <laughs> so <laughs> That's too much research, bro. <laughs> I know. So where did the idea come from to cover that song in particular from the whole 70s soul catalog? I'll tell you where that, that um, idea came from. My uh, my manager back then was uh, Keith Harris. Keith Harris manages uh, Stevie, Stevie Wonder. <clears throat> he was like, yeah, that would, that would make a, a good tune. And then, you know, dun, 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 dun. I was like, yeah, I can sing over that. You know what I mean? It's just easy to do. And uh, yeah, we just ran with it. And that seems to be one of my biggest covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah to this day. amazing cover, and this song carries so much positive energy. You know, every time you hear it, w whether it's the original version or your cover, mm -hmm. it's just so much positivity mm -hmm. in of the course, track. Of yeah. course, of course, yeah, yeah. And uh, speaking of working with legends, <laughs> just seen how many how many questions he's got down there. <laughs> <laughs> a few more, a few more. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's uh, good. You, you had a chance to work with two absolute soul uh, legends, uh, Stevie Wonder on the track Feeling You and Leon Ware on Gave My Heart. Mm. Uh, how would you describe those two experiences and compare them uh, to well, each other? Um, me and Leon are like kindred spirits. We met on a, a, a It was a conference called uh, Midem in south of France, in Cannes, and it was uh, a celebration of Marvin Gaye. I didn't know who the hell Leon was, but <laughs> I, I'm sure we can talk about this. I ended up in, in a, a toilet cubicle with Leon Ware and El Barge smoking a reefer, right? <laughs> and and like, me and him were talking, he's like, Bro, I, I get you, I get you. And I didn't know who he was for at least a year. You know, until I went to the Roxy in LA and there's Gerald Albright on his sax saying, this is for Leon Ware. And there's uh, uh, Wesley Snipes saying, this is Leon Ware. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And then I find out he wrote for Michael Jackson, he wrote for Marvin Gaye, he wrote for Minnie Ripperton. You know what I mean? This guy was huge. Uh, but but me and him clicked on a on a on different on a, level on a different level exactly, and who was the other person? Uh, it was Stevie and, and yeah, <laughs> I had to ask him that. And Stevie, I met Stevie through the years, and then ended up working with, with him because my manager used to manage him, and he heard my second album, Music, and he was like, "Yeah, he, he wants to write me my first number one." I'm like, "Yo, Stevie Wonder, I won't do anything <laughs> with you." You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, finally I got a, a phone call out of the blue. He was like, yo man, it's your boy. I'm like, who's that? He goes, Steve. I went, Steve who? He goes, Stevie Wonder. I went, yeah, whatever. Send me something. And then for two weeks, I hang out with him. We were in clubs, we were in restaurants, we were in the hotel. And then we went to the studio and we wrote that song. Nice. Uh, do you have any favorite story from hanging out with Stevie? Because that, that's not something that... <laughs> not that I can tell you, even with this channel. <laughs> All right. Recently, Shaq had a story from meeting Stevie Wonder in, in the elevator. Shaq. Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What did he say? He said that he came into the elevator um, and he saw Stevie Wonder and Stevie was like, what up, Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> Now, I've heard this before, like uh, in Motown, Leon used to tell me this because Leon Ware used to work in Motown. He said he used to work out what color dress the women wear, wore, stuff like that. <laughs> All right. So moving on to uh, this album, 
uh, uh, RH Factor, Roy Hargrove, mm. Strength EP. Uh, you're there on the track for fun, which is a, a remix of Common Freestyle song that, that Common was on originally. Mm -hmm. And when I spoke to Common in 2019, he remembered how uh, he was so grateful to Roy for, for, for him letting, uh, letting him f just freestyle on a track and how the whole session was just a one take freestyle. Uh, so what's your memory from working on the track for fun? Because it sounds like you really had a lot no of fun. I memory of that one though, <laughs> after we talk about that one. Um, no, it's a friend of mine, Brian Backus, who I worked with in uh, New York, and it was a label called Loud. And when I was there at the time, he just said, yeah, you want to come on this track? And I didn't know what I was doing. I just sang my bit. And then you hear Roy, you hear, you know what I mean? You hear really uh, after that, but then it, sound, it turned out really great. Okay, yeah. Uh, and the last collab that I want to ask you about uh, is the intro for Love and Beats, uh, the song Vicky's Tune where you have uh, one of my favorite UK rapper of all time, Ty, rest in peace. Yes, rest in um, peace, best. So I have, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have two questions about the track. Uh, first one, who, who, is, who is Vicky? Is Vicky's tune? Vicky is the mother of my children. Oh, right? okay. So you uh, hear um, uh, girls, Girl Talk, mm -hmm. the two girls talking, those yeah, are my yeah. twin girls, they're 15 now, but um, Vicky is the mother of, oh, of the girls. Okay, mm. that's beautiful. And uh, how important is this song for you and being able to work with Ty finally after all those years? Well, I'm going to do this. Okay. I had to do that because <laughs> I wrote a song called Celeste. I don't know if you know that song. Celeste is a song about an ex-girlfriend and she did like that one. So then I had to redress the ballads and call it Vicky's Gym. <laughs> make, it, make it nice for her, all right? <laughs> and as far as just working with Ty, uh, yeah, Ty, man, it was just prolific. And uh, he was really, really nice about my album previous to that, which was called The Man. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just remember him talking about that and getting him to, you know, do his, do his thing. Um, losing him was just, it was just, uh, yeah, I can't even, you yeah. know, uh, talk about how big that, you know, his influence was and when he passed and what he meant, what he meant to everybody. So unique a style as well, you know? No, yeah. we'll, we'll never see anything like him again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so just looking at this whole beautiful catalog that we got here, what would you say is the most overlooked and underrated song <laughs> that you've done and album? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, uh, um, everybody has their own, uh, uh, you know, wh what they like. I mean, you know, this album, was after I'd, I'd been on, on, on the major labels. Uh, the Americans seemed to like, love this one and this one. Uh, this one was uh, a big one because I, 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 I turned it a, a different direction. This one I would always love because it was my first one. Uh, this is my last one. You want to hear the next, the next one? Uh, the next yes, one is sir. ready. I've got like this one and another one <laughs> on top okay. of that as well. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm blessed to be able to to make the music and pe for you know people like yourself to uh, pay attention to me. You know, it's thank you. You know, you see how much shit is going on in the world right now. Yeah. People can't pay their bills, you know, buy food, and you know, there's wars and there's you know illnesses and all that that kind of stuff. I don't, that stuff doesn't tro trouble me or my family, you know what I mean? I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. So, yeah, I'm just happy with all of it. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for, you know, providing so much food for the soul with, with, the, with the music. Thank you. Thank it's, you. It's amazing vibes. Bless you. Uh, okay, so two last questions. Uh, 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 what would you say is your biggest musical accomplishment? My biggest musical accomplishment? Um, I think working with Stevie is a big one, but then there's also working with Sarita Wright. Okay, you know who she is? She was Stevie's uh, ex-wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. But she's okay. my favorite um, female vocalist of, of all time. When she sang my song, which is called Lullaby, I just cried like a baby. Cried mm -hmm. like a baby. I didn't cry like that when I, when I worked with Stevie, but when I worked with her, I cried like that. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. Um, and just to still we out there. I've got 16 year olds, 15 year olds coming to my shows now, you know, still. So, you know, um, to still be relevant is a blessing. I'm just uh, yeah, eternally grateful.
Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, what are your plans for the future as far as music and acting? Because I know that you also <laughs> got into acting recently. That reached over here, did it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm still uh, acting. I've, I've been acting for since uh, 2009. But like I was saying before, I've got uh, uh, the ninth album coming out. I'm also working on a TV show based on my time at school in Manchester, mm -hmm. at boarding school. I'm working on a, a theater piece as well. So, you know, I'm busy. I'm busy. Okay, perfect. So do you have any last words for the fans in Poland? Poland, I love you. Love you bad. Like cooked food. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks so much, man. It's an honor. Bless It's you, a pleasure. Bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Oh,